I've just found another couple of jobs for Baz. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Baz asked me to clean up this little stain and he said have a look to see if you can find out where it's coming from. The gasket that comes out of the outflow at the back of the toilet. So before I get to clean he gets to pull the toilet apart again. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so he's got the pipe off and now he's just looking for a spanner so that he can unscrew that. That's more than a seal, Baz. <laughs> Yeah. What's going on? Well, the whole thing had to come out. It's just easier to work out here because getting this off is going to be very tricky. And for Fernando back in the marina in Spain, in San Pedro del Pinatar, today I'm doing Trabajo Mieda. <laughs> that has mm. got to unscrew from there so that pops off. But the whole thing is just turning. Oh, I see. Yeah. Unless that screws into oh, there. Yeah, it's actually yeah, there. Look, there, see, yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> but I don't want to damage that plastic no, no. thread. Yeah, what about wearing your sailing gloves? So that's just an o-ring to uh, seal the pipe to this bit. Oh. Yeah, the whole thing's just turning. Mm. You could just complete the other projects and come back to this so that you've actually completed something today, mentally. Yeah, let me just... If I'm going into town... Yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, I reckon there'll be... Uh, a video on YouTube of how to disassemble and service uh, a Jabsco toilet. Yeah. So, let's go and have a look. I think you're a flower, Buzz. Just don't move, because you don't want to kill it. There he goes. There we go. <laughs> there, that was your first experience with a bumblebee. <laughs> Tell you what, this time of year in Greece is uh, there's all sorts of things coming out of the woodwork. Um, we yeah, get so, so many little beetles, though, shiny green ones and brown ones, just coming through the open hatches, and uh, you just got to like pick them up and put them back outside again. They fly off when you put them outside, but when they come in, they just land on their backs and lay there pretending to be dead. <laughs> oh, looks like he got it off, Baz. Yeah, I managed to get it out. Um, it's it's. Uh, if that's meant to be flexible rubber, then it's definitely been corroded by the salt water because it's it's fairly hard now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is obviously a custom piece for a Jabsco toilet, but I'm going to mm. take it into town anyway and see if maybe there's a plumber or maybe the hardware store has got something that will fit the bill. Mm. It's a long shot, but if you don't try, you never know. Mm -hmm. So I'm off to town. <laughs> Toodles. Toodles. Well, at least you don't need a permission slip anymore. No, I don't. Just need my passport. Well, a somewhat successful trip into town. The hardware store was closed and there didn't seem to be anybody hiding inside ready to pounce if any customer actually showed up. Luckily, the local motorcycle mechanic was open and he was kind of like um, serving through his mesh screen door and his wife spoke very good English, so that was helpful. So originally what I did was I just put everything I wanted in a bag with the number next to it, so if there was any language problems, yeah, everyone understands numbers. Uh, so we did manage to get four of these little hose clamps, which is great, and we got four of these bigger hose clamps, which is perfect, and I actually only asked for two of these little bronze washers, uh, but he gave me six, half a dozen or so. Unfortunately, no luck getting these. These are an essential bit of kit. This is where we attach our dinghy to the davit lines. 
Um, so unless we um, find somewhere that sells them, and I'm definitely not going to get these galvanised ones again, I'll make sure that they are stainless steel. And these little plastic hooks, we want two more of those, and no they didn't have any of those, so I don't know where I'll get them. And he didn't have any of those, I wanted four of those, those are the things that screw into each other uh, to form a lock, a seal. And he didn't have any of these little stainless steel grub screws, I wanted four of those. So, the search continues. And obviously didn't have any of that dirty plastic. And he didn't have obviously one of these because it's, it's a specialist part and I think we're just going to have to order it online. Yeah, maybe a, a whole gasket the, kit for them. Kit. And you're going to wash your hands really well after that, aren't you? So, now we've done that and we've got the toilet out, it's time to get back to the jobs that we were meant to be doing this morning and it's now this afternoon. Yeah, I have cleaned the toilet by the way, so when we do get the parts... Ping. So that's all clean now. So is that shining. Look at that. <laughs> oh. I deliberately bought two metres of this sanitation hose because I wanted to make sure we had the longest length possible. So when I put it back into the head, now that the head is out of the head, I'm going to attach it to the head end uh, and then find out how much I need inside the cupboard to attach to the through hole and seacock and cut it off at that end because it'll be a lot easier. So, me and the snake are going in the head. <laughs> so, if that comes out through there and then loops up there to go there, what's the difference? Has it got to loop up? It's got to create a loop so yeah. the water doesn't flow back in. just for the sheer ease of getting it done. And here it is in place. A nice big loop. There's going to be no water coming back up that way. And Baz has used Ziploc ties to keep it in place. Now we just need to fix the loo. Oh my word Baz, what's that? This is our first steak since Christmas. Mmm, yummo. Good job we got the big plates out, eh? Certainly is. This looks like a really nice bottle of wine. Mmm, -mm. two glasses from Jim. Right, let's go eat, sweet. Today it's about uh, 34 degrees, and you know, of course, living on a boat on the hard, it seems even hotter because there's very little breeze. Um, so Angie's outside after dipping her toes in the water, just chilling on the foredeck and, you know, thinking like she's on a luxury yacht and of course the glamorous lifestyle that it is living on a yacht. So uh, let's just take a look. Yes, very glamorous. <laughs> I have an outdoor toilet too. <laughs> yeah, that's where the toilet's living until we can get the replacement part to go into the back. There's no point putting it anywhere else at the moment. Enjoy your sunbathing. Thank you. Sandpaper? Check. Washing up liquid? Check. Oven glove? Check. Mallet? Check. Cool. Let's do it. Now the old cutlass bearing is out, it's time to give the inside of the P-bracket a good sanding to make it as smooth as possible. <laughs> so that is quite smooth. Now it's time to apply some washing up liquid. You could do with something a bit longer to poke in there, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, get to the middle bit. I'm getting to the middle bit. <laughs> now it's time to grab our little teeny picnic insulated bag. We're going to put the ice blocks in there and then we're going to retrieve the new cutlass bearing from the freezer where it's been languishing for probably about a week now. Oh, 
Well, that's disappointing, so we're going to have to call the guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Go get his number. It's the following day of the Cutlass Bearing Saga, and the mechanics just arrived this morning with his son who speaks English, so our communication was very good. But we have a problem, and it needs to be solved. The diameter of the new Cutlass Bearing is 45 millimeters. The diameter of the old Cutlass Bearing is 44.5 millimeters. So we're talking a difference of just half a millimeter. And that will cause issues if we try and force this in and it gets stuck halfway. So they've advised me that there is a guy locally who, who does have a lathe who could possibly shave half a millimeter off the outside of this. But first they want me to contact the supplier in the UK and ask them what their thoughts are. So it's email time to the UK. I've just spent the last hour sending emails back and forth with the very helpful Tom at Exalto Bearings in the UK. And the upshot is that it looks like we've been caught in the vortex that is the imperial and metric sizing. For some reason, Junot, a French built boat in Europe which uses the metric system, has actually made the P bracket using imperial sizes for the diameter. So we've got caught out because, I can't remember exactly, I think it's one and three quarters of an inch, which works out to 44.45 millimeters. And of course, that's what this is. Anyway, the very helpful Tom at Exalto has said what he's going to do is he's going to raise a new invoice, because they do have imperial measurement bearings as well, which I can then pay online from my bank. He will then mail the 44.45 millimeter bearing to me. And then once I receive that, I can mail the other one back to him and he will raise a credit note and deposit the money for that one back into our bank account. It's gonna take a little time, obviously, because COVID-19 is still around. The couriers are overwhelmed with work and there are fewer flights flying. So we'll see how long it takes, but things are in motion and the Cutlass Bearing Saga looks like it's going to get solved pretty soon. Thanks, Tom. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support the channel, then you can do exactly what our latest patron did. Jack Thompson, welcome aboard. He will have his name in lights at the end of this video, and you can too. So check out the Patreon page. The website address is on screen right now. Talking about right now, it's time for me to go and get the shopping in. Stay safe out there.